Welcome to Ceramics Glass. For your project, you are going to be making a lidded box. Now this box is a little bit more complicated than what you would need to make or what's being asked of you, but this is something with the same techniques and then the feet are raised up. You can see the inside. And then you can see that inside. So you can see how I use the different slip if you want your uh, clay to look the same when it fires, don't mix your slips. One of the things that I require is a lid. So here I have the lid for the box. Okay. I have a carving on the side of it. I have a foot and the names on there. These are the, these are the feet, by the way, if you weren't too sure. It lifts it up. It has a nice feel to lift it up away from the body. Okay. And here's my lid. This lid's a little bit more complicated also. I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple lid. And then you can do something like this later. The way I made this lid is this whole piece was one. And then I put a soft clay on top. That kind of just sat on top of it. And then later on, once... Later on, once I uh, this this was stiff, then I went in and cut with the knife that shape that I wanted for the lid, and then took it off, smoothed it out. So this was a Raku fire that has a lid. You take the lid off like that. It has something to keep the lid from uh, from sliding off. Okay, but not to slide off that way. It has a foot, the feet. Do it. This is another box. Has a lid. This one's a little bit more complicated because this lid is, uh, you can see how it has all these little castle cuts to it. And then there's also another angle right here. You see that? Okay. This is a really nice box. They have their foot. Okay. They have their carvings on the side, their design. There we go. Kind of a cool shape. It's kind of a cool box. All this was, was a square box like the one we're going to make today. And then I went and I cut these angles off later. To make it interesting I left one side but then I cut the bottom and then I went and added a little bit of clay right in that triangle so that it was nicely angled like that okay then also I just followed my contour with the mid cut to make it interesting here is another student made box this is the most simple type of lid. It's just a flat piece of clay with another piece of clay connected to it and it just sits right on top. It still doesn't go off anywhere. It has a handle. It has a carving. It has another carving on this side and it has a foot also. You see the feet that's on it? There's a lidded box with the carvings on it. I have my bases. I have my sides. And these are five by five, and then these are uh, five by six. Okay. I did have to make the bottom a quarter inch larger on each side. This is five and a quarter inches, and this is six and a quarter inches. And the reason for that is when you are building your, like this one better, a little bit more square. When you're building your sides, you want to have enough space for this to be flush on this side and the other uh, wall to be able to fit right here. Uh, and then on this end, you'd have the other wall fit right here. And then it's going to come and stop. And then this one's going to come from the edge all the way in. And then you have that like windmill effect to it. And it, it tends to be a little bit stronger. Okay. We are putting the clay on top of the clay that we have already, okay? Not on the outside of it. 
So the more precise that I am with uh, my edges and my sides, the nicer it's going to kind of just fall into place. Let's start building. When you build, you pick a side that you want to start with. Any side will work, doesn't matter. I'm going to score here and score here with my serrated uh, metal scraper. I mean, I can score everything that I'm going to attach to already. So here. Make sure you score it really well. Get your first side that you're going to put on. Do the one first. We will say this one goes right here. Okay. So I'm going to score the bottom of this and the side of this. Okay. Okay, bottom and side. And this inside edge, we could score it also. for the other one when it comes this way, okay? So I have here, and then get my slip. If you don't have a paintbrush, then just use your fingers. Paintbrush keeps it nice and clean. So use your paintbrush, be generous, put it on. As I put it on, push down and add a little bit of pressure. Am I in focus? Okay, when you do it, make sure you push down and hold it so it has a nice uh, connection. All right, so if the clay is too soft, it's gonna wanna fall either way. I'm gonna score the end, the bottom, the bottom and the end. Okay, so it'll fit like that and this end also. Slip it really nice, get that slip in it. Slip the end, slip the bottom. Now do I have to put a coil on the inside? No, but will it help a lot with strength? Yes, okay. Take it over, put it in, compress the sides. So I'm going to press in and down. Make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, so press down and into each other. It's just like I'm gluing it. Slip is your friend. Okay, so now I have my two sides up. Okay, uh, here you can see I'm just going to take my rubber kidney to scrape off the extra slip I don't need. Push out that corner to match. And as I do it, you can see the rubber kidney makes it nice and even. There's a little uh, dent in here you can see. Just come in and fill it with slip and then you can run your kidney over it to make it nice and smooth. I'm going to make two coils to go on this edge and that edge. Okay. It's all rolled out. Break off the pieces you need. This one will fit there. Get it nice and slippy. Slip it up. Push it into place where you need it. Leave, you gotta cut this edge off so that you can leave space for the next wall to come in here. Do your verticals also. That adds more strength. I have my coils in on those three sides. And then I'm going to paint some slip on there, keep it nice and wet, also to fill some of those gaps. 
So this is the same idea as the cylinder with the, the coils down at the bottom, okay? Get a tool that's nice and round and uh, you're gonna support with the outside hand, hold it, and then you go and smooth it out. And this makes a nice connection. It's okay, it's just kind of compressing it down in there. I'm supporting it with my outside hand so that I don't make it bulge. Remember, the more particular you are about how nice you make it, the nicer your projects are going to come out. I don't know how much I can emphasize that and stress that. that it, it all comes out to, you know, how much detail you're paying attention to. If you miss, you know, something or you don't really care, then your projects won't come out as nice. Also, if the bottom's rough or dirty, you can take your uh, kidney tool. You could also take a wooden lid, kind of clean it up. Your fingers are good for smoothing. Now I'm ready for my other two walls, okay? So I'll take my end, double check to see where it goes. Uh, this wall looks good, it's gonna fit nicely, okay? Score the edge that's going to connect to here. That's already scored. Score the bottom. And score that inside edge that way. Score, 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 score. Slip, 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 slip. All right. Now let's slip it up. Oh, make it a mess. Come in here, push down, push it against the other wall. Support on this outside hand. You get a nice, solid connection. Blue. Okay, take your rubber kidney, smooth it out. Okay, sometimes your rubber kidney gets dirty. I like to clean it off. Just like your fingers, you want to keep your fingers nice and clean. If it's, like here you can see it. Uh, I think you can see it. Maybe you can't. It's bulging out just a little bit. I can take my knife and just trim off that excess. And I'll keep it nice and even. Or else sometimes you got to go with your kidney a bunch of times to or rib to make it um, more smooth if it's sticking out. So if you can cut it off, you can cut it off, that's fine. If you can't cut it, then use your rib. Okay. All right, so I got those sides. I'm going to put the coil in right here and right here while we're here so that it will be easier. So right here you can see it, it looks like a little air bubble. So I'm going to start from the bottom, support both sides in the bottom. And really push it into that corner to try to get rid of, I mean, there we go. The slip filled it because I kind of pushed it up from the bottom. Take your other wall, fit it, see if it fits how you want it to fit. Score the bottom, score that inside edge. Some people slip and score at the same time. There's a there's a tool that you can just dip and slip and score. Maybe save a little bit of time, but it can be more messy, a little bit more expensive. That's why you guys don't have them. And uh, score and slip is fine. Connect it. So how from just like pushing them together like that, is it gonna be structurally sound? Like there isn't any uh, supports or anything on the inside. When Once you score and slip it, it's like it's all one piece, okay? Uh -huh. So we're not actually, it's not, the slip is not actually a glue. 
it's the same material as the clay. So we made it from the same clay. And what happens is we're really welding it together. So by scoring and slipping, you're, it's like you're sanding and grinding and welding, I guess you can say. And you're adding the same material. So just like you know a weld, if the weld has pockets in it or places that are not strong or not 100% connected, the same material, then it turns weak and that's where the weld can crack. Same thing with clay. If the clay is, uh, is not the same throughout, then that's your gonna be a weak point and it can crack. I need to put two, three more coils and then I'm done with my base. Do your coils have to be round? No, does it make it maybe easier to put in certain areas? Maybe, yeah, it's easier, it's either easier to blend it. All right, here I'm looking down inside, I'm trying to look down inside. And uh, I'm going to smooth out, support on the outside. Okay. Sometimes you need to move that clay around on your tool a little bit to get it. So you can push it into switching holes. Now I have my four sides on and my base just going through and smoothing it out uh, a way that you could flip it easy just put another board on it or put something on top of it so you can do this and that makes it so that I'm not actually grabbing it I go to pick it up so it's an inch and a half all the way around so this line is going to come like that this line is going to come like that. This line is going to come like that. Okay. So I will just go through and cut it. If you have an X Acto knife, that probably be even easier because the X Acto knife is sharper. Keep it. Cut this and show you guys at the same time. So I'm supporting on this other edge as I cut. I'm just pushing down. If I do a sawing motion, it's gonna tear the clay. Okay, so you see it has that little hole. Okay, get some clay, fill it in. You want it to be as thick as, well, pretty thick, like the walls, so that you don't end up uh, cracking there. And then squeeze it out. And then you can grab your box, support from the inside, push back out, smooth it out. This is soft enough that I don't need to score and slip it. If you feel like it's not nice enough for you, you can paddle. And that makes the whole... Makes it the same. The nice thing about the paddle. So here, there's a lip on here that's kind of sharp. Sometimes I use the lip on uh, the edge of the knife just to scrape off anything that's sticking out the side of it. So it's nice and straight. These are your tips and tricks for ceramics. So covered like this. Hopefully it'll keep it from drying out too much so that the next time when I come back to add to it or to carve on it, it'll be perfect and I won't have to uh, get it wet. So that's my goal. All right. Uh, until our next step, you know how to make a box.